Today, on a very special episode of And So The Mind Reels, we will take a background, back check, back road look at why someone would want to go into the art. Into the art. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of And So The Mind Reels podcast. Thank you so much for deciding to listen today. And the last episode, I mentioned that I don't have any sponsors, underwriters, corporate uh, type people giving me uh, promos for their promos. So what I do have, though, is a lot of creative, cool friends that do a lot of creative, interesting things. One of them I thought I'd go ahead and give a shout out to, and that's Mr. Al Admire. Alan Admire was a part of the sketch comedy improv group that I was a part of way back in the day. Al had a lot of experience with improv groups from Second City and taught me a whole lot. Now, Al and a guy named Pat Finn. Pat was also a member of Second City and has been an actor on Friends and he's been on Seinfeld. Anyway, he and Al have teamed up and created a company called Improvability. And what they do is they teach business people the skills and the keys of improvisation. They also now have a podcast going called Improv for Business that teaches you a whole lot about the yes and, the building upon, the, the team building type things that businesses can use, all based on in the rules of improv. I've been in improv for a long time and did it for a long time and I've been listening to their podcast and I'm learning a whole bunch of stuff so you can always learn. It's called Improv for Business Podcast. I highly recommend it and don't tell them that I sent you because you're just going to be clicking on your phone to get it and you wouldn't be talking to your phone. It'd be kind of kind of odd and people might think you're weird. Anyway, so today what I wanted to do is kind of pull out a little bit more detail of a question that I asked uh, a friend of mine, Bob Baker, who has his own show going, and I was a guest on there, and we were able to ask each other three questions. One of the questions I asked Bob that I guess I always ask of myself and I ask other people that I meet who are, you know, they're actors or they're filmmakers or they're artists or they're dancers or they're, they're somehow involved in the arts because arts... In in a sense, uh, with people, isn't the most um, lucrative field that you could go into, the most respectable thing to go into. If you're at a at a party and someone says, "Hey, what do you do?" and you say, "Oh, I'm a I'm an actor," and they're like, "Oh, really? How how how's that going for you?" You know, it, it it's kind of a uh, there's kind of a stigmatism of of being in the arts that that uh, people would rather you answer by saying you're a podiatrist or a a, a gentle hygienist, a gentle hygienist, yeah, a dental hygienist or something of that nature where you have a career that is formidable and uh, kind of upstanding in society. And, you know, you, you, you can proudly throw your chest out and say, yeah, that's right. I'm a lawyer. I'm an upstanding member of society who contributes to the well-being of everyone involved. I don't merely just prance about the stage, reciting lines and being all dramatic and singing songs and painting pictures that just hang in people's living rooms. And why would you want to be an artist? Please tell me. So I always am drawn to people of the arts and wanting to know why, wh what made you want to do this? I mean, was it something in your childhood? You, you liked finger painting and you wanted to grow up and do it for a living? Or you liked using your imagination and playing house and, and wanted to grow up and just pretend to be other people on the stage or in movies or, you know, tell stories? You love telling stories? How did, it, how did it come to be that you said to yourself one day, by golly, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to make a living from it and, you know, damn the torpedoes full speed ahead. So I asked Bob that very question. I asked Bob, why 
did you decide to pursue what you pursued? I mean, he's an author. He, he, he was written books. He's in music. He's written books about music. He does affirmations. He's written books about affirmations. He's just done a lot of creative things and sustains himself. Just totally makes a living doing what he wants to do in the creative field. So I asked Bob, I said, what was it that drew you to the arts that made you want to do that? You know, instead of like going to work for McDonald's or being a, a shift manager at Denny's or, you know, uh, being a paralegal or anything that's quote unquote respectable. And I'm going to go ahead and play Bob's answer uh, for you. And it, uh, it's, it, it's quite revealing for anybody who's ever gone into the arts or wanted to be into the arts. You may find some things that he says kind of resonate within you. So here's his answer. Good. Okay, good. Uh, good question. <laughs> um, you know, it's interesting because I've often said I don't know. I've always had um, – so, so, so we mentioned uh, being raised by single moms and being mm-hmm. – and, and I was my mom's only child. I think it's in a similar way that you, that you mm-hmm. were. And so I uh, had to learn to be independent. I didn't have the siblings around to interact with, you know. Um, and, uh, and so I learned to be very independent minded. I think that was one part of it. Uh, also when I was a kid, uh, I can't remember what your experience was, but in grade school and early high school, I was like extremely like, I was very kind of shy or socially awkward, lacked a lot of confidence, self-worth, you know, here too. Um, Yep. And, um, and, uh, but I, it was weird though because I knew I felt like there was I would like see people at parties or something that were like laughing and making other people laugh and they were kind of like um, and people performing or, or whatever and, and thinking there was something inside of me that said man I want to I want to do like I felt there was something inside of me that was wanting to come out and express itself mm-hmm. in that more uh, in that in that manner but that I was being held and I eventually realized I was being held back by this exterior of shyness and awkwardness and I stuttered right a lot when I was a kid too, which would make me even more nervous about talking to people, especially girls. <laughs> at that time. Um, so I don't know because I didn't have role models per se. Like sometimes you'll have right. a role model in your life who, uh, Oh, you know, uh, my uncle or my dad was an entrepreneur or something. My mom was a very loving, beautiful person. And she did amazing things to, 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 uh, raise me. Um, in the best way that she could with very limited funds. She always had like low paying jobs, never had a car. So, um, and she encouraged me, but what, but I, so I didn't have it. I can't remember any role models that I had. Right. So there must've been something innately within me that I can't explain that was just calling me. And I think another thing that I did since I was bad at sports and I wasn't, uh, did a lot of the, didn't get accepted in a lot of the regular school activities. I, I turned to the arts. It was like, right. it was, there was something that I could control. And um, so I turned to music and writing, uh, um, the visual art. Um, and so I was really drawn to creative things. And I don't know that, yeah, what it was, but I know I was stubbornly determined over the years to figure out a way to make a living doing something that I enjoyed doing that was of my own making and right. couple that with whatever I had jobs. And I've had a lot of them, you know, I had to, I've, I've never been, I've always had to do what I had to do to, to at least have a place to live in a car that ran. Um, but I knew I was never happy working for someone else and someone right, right. telling me what to do. And, um, and so I said, I cannot see myself. This is not a long-term thing. I would, I would muscle. I would just kind of suck it up and do what I needed to do to keep, to keep the money com- coming in. But I never got comfortable. Uh, the the uh, that was more dissatisfying than whatever it was going to take. The challenges, because yeah, you, either route that you take is going to be challenges. Um, there certainly is going the entrepreneurial route. But I was more willing to do that work and mm-hmm. put up with those frustrations and sure challenges then tend to just settle for working for somebody else and be, you know uh, within bob's uh, answer there there was a lot of things that resonated for me i mean we were we were alike in a lot of respects we were only kids raised by single mothers it wasn't until much later in life that uh, through a dna test that I, I actually found that i had uh siblings uh i knew i had them but just never knew if they knew i was around and did a dna test we connected and uh the reason i'm saying this is because my 
half brother. My brother is actually a school teacher and was very interested in what it was that I did, uh, you know, as a side business as for a living as being a, a writer and a playwright and an actor involved in theater and the performing arts and invited me to come in and speak to his class. He teaches seventh grade. He's a, a literature uh, teacher and teaches English and, and literature and, and they study theater and thought it'd be great to have me come in and talk to the class. And what I can connected with with them that I saw uh, where I grabbed their attention is that I mentioned that when I was in school, I was the kid that sat kind of like toward the back or the middle, and I was always daydreaming. I was the one looking out the window. I was the one that was always, uh, the teacher would call upon me, and I didn't hear because I was imagining uh, what happened if, you know, if Bruce Lee had been on Kung Fu and David Carradine, and if they got, you know, I was just in my head. I was living in my head all the time, in my imagination, creating stories. I wasn't paying attention. And it was when I said that, I saw a few of the kids in the class kind of go, oh, you mean it's okay to do that? It's okay to live in your head and have an imagination? And yes, it is. It is. Just, yeah, I mean, you need to pay attention to school too and learn what they're, they're teaching you. But you can be that kid. You can be the dreamer. There is absolutely nothing at all wrong with that. And some of us find a way in life to uh, make a living or etch out uh, a part of a living or a kind of a living doing exactly that, living in our heads and using our imaginations to create things. I mean, I was always really, really good at acting always really liked theater, but you know, I kind of had to put those things away when I got married and, and had a family and had to have a respectable job. But there was always something within me that still wanted to get out there, wanted to, to, to still be a part of that world. And what I found was playwriting. I mean, being a playwright, I could sit at home and write and still be involved in theater. I could put those things out there and theater groups could do them. So I still had like a, a web, a line going out into the theater world that still allowed me to be involved, but allowed me to stay at home and be, uh, you know, the husband, the guy at home with the job and the car and the garage and the whole, you know, that whole trip. So I found a way to do it. And I think if it's really a strong passion within us, a lot of us still find a way to, to get out there and do the things. I mean, that's community theater. If you've ever been involved in community theater, a lot of people, almost like 99.9% .9 of the people involved in community theater work all day. And then they get off work and they come to the theater and we rehearse and we have a great time. They still love acting and being involved in theater. And this is one way to do it. You can get involved in community theater or you can be um, in a band, a bar band that plays on weekends. Or you can, you know, sign up for a painting class, a Bob Ross thing or, well, not the Bob Ross. If you've seen the documentary on Netflix, don't. Yeah, you, you, you never mind about that. Anyway, there's always a way that I think the passion within you can come out, can like in my case, like, as I said, you know, I found a way to be connected still, but still be at home and being the respectable guy that when uh, I get asked to get parties, you know, hey, what do you do? I say, well, I'm, you know, I'm in IT. Oh, okay. And I'm a playwright. Oh, oh, really? You know, it's like, hey, wow, how can you do all that stuff? And it's like, well, it's, it's easy. If you have the, if you have the passion and you want to be in the arts, you can be in the arts. There are ways you can do it. There's, there's plenty of ways to do it. Those are just a few ideas or a few examples. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you out there, if you're listening, if you're this type of person, maybe you have a story. Maybe you have a way that you found that you can still do what you really like to do that's involved in the arts and maintain kind of a dual existence. You know, I mean, I welcome you to let me know and, and have your story told. And, and how did you do it so that others maybe can learn from you? It's that little kid that's that's inside us that that, you know, as Bob was saying, that wanted to break out, that wanted to be one of the people that were entertaining people or one of the people that that people were paying attention to and not be the shy, awkward kid. And you have to overcome that. I did the same thing. I was the kid that that I said, I said, sat and looked out the window. I didn't really talk to anybody. I was really shy. I auditioned for the theater class. I got into some plays and all of a sudden I was up there on the stage 
being somebody completely different, somebody that talked a lot, or I could be this guy, I could be a cowboy, I could be a detective, I could be a, a killer, I could be a, a, a whatever. And people were just blown away. It's like, how, how, how can you do that? You, you don't talk to anybody. It's like, well, yeah, I don't talk to anybody, but you know, I found a thing that I could plug into where all of that could come out and it came out in a different form and in a funnel of a character, or it came out in writing stuff down on a page and creating characters. I mean, there was a way for that inner person to come out and I just found it. The bottom line here is don't be afraid. If you want to be involved in the arts, no matter what it is, whether you're a musician or a painter or a dancer or an actor or a writer, you can always do it to to satisfy your soul, to satisfy that need. You don't put it away. You don't have to put it away. No matter, don't be afraid of the people at the cocktail parties that are going to ask you what you do for a living. Just, you can throw your chest out like the lawyers and the doctors and just say, I'm an artist. Damn it. I'm an artist. You know, just, you're Spartacus. You're, 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 you're just as worthy as anybody else. And there are ways that you can do it. I'm living proof. Bob's living proof. They're a, hundreds of thousands of people out there, probably even more. I'm just kind of narrowing it, but there's probably millions of people who are doing what they want to do, involved in the arts, and aren't afraid to tell people, and can make a living, and can get by, even if you have to balance two worlds like I do. I mean, I'm happy doing both. I don't care. It it, it fulfills a need in me, and as Bob does the same thing, and I'm sure Al and Pat, the other guys I were talking about at the beginning, doing their improv thing, they're fulfilling a need, that, that, that a passion that they have. And it's very simple. So that's the bottom line, the takeaway. I thought I would close this with a very appropriate uh, quote uh, from one of my favorite writers from, uh, well, just one of my favorite writers, Kurt Vonnegut Jr., who had this quote that I had up for a long time. And just as I was talking about going into the arts, I thought, ha, huh, I know where I've heard this before. And this is from Kurt Vonnegut Jr. And the quote goes like this, go into the arts. I'm not kidding. The arts are not a way to make a living. They are a very human way of making life more bearable. Practicing an art, no matter how well or badly, is a way to make your soul grow. For heaven's sake, sing in the shower, dance to the radio, tell stories, write a poem to a friend, even a lousy poem. Do it as well as you possibly can. You will get an enormous reward. You will have created something. And so, the mind reels.